Hi, uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, today what we're going to do, we're going to be looking at a Motor Gussie California a metal one. It's got the chrome tank. We're going to give it a service and we're going to also try to fit these LED sort of driving lights. Um, so anyway, let's have a look at the bike. Right, so this is the bike and what I've been doing while well, I've been setting up the camera, I've taken up the drain plug and I've been letting the oil drain. Uh, it was just a 22mm socket um, and over here we've got the let's see there's the uh, dipstick which it mentioned take out in the, in the instruction manual and also the drain plug which is a magnetic type and it's, it's pretty clean couldn't see anything on it and the oil's not bad so the next thing I've got to do you can see around here there's loads of allen keys all the way around and I'm not sure if there's one or two underneath maybe one or two bolts underneath I think there's 18 fixings in total so I'm going to have a go at taking those out Right, so I'll just put the air drain plug back in for the time being and even though I may be taking that out again I'm going to nip it up tight because there's nothing worse than putting things back together and then in that much of a panic or excited that you forget to tighten it up. We're doing a few jobs on this today. Oil, an oil filter change, uh, gearbox oil, diff oil, um, set the gap on the plugs, set the tapper adjustment, clean the air filter, and what else? And then I think that's it, but we'll give it a check over because we're going to take it in for an MOT as well. And then there's the, the lights to change as well. Right, so that's all 14 of the Allen key bolts out. Um, now I did see in the book that there's 18 bolts and underneath here there seems to be two bolts at the front and two at the back which are 10 millimeter socket. So I'm just trying, gonna try and get them cracked off. Now, you might be wondering why I'm working outside. One reason is it's quite a nice day so may as well take advantage of it. And the other one is, my garage is that crammed full of rubbish, I kind of get in there. I can just get the bike in but not enough room to actually do any work on. Now I have been uh, busy for a while, as you're probably aware I haven't put any videos out for quite a long time. But I'm starting to get on top of things now. I'm missing there it is so hopefully I can start putting more videos out I've moved the oil pan out the way when I remove this I might have to might have to put it back underneath to keep drips to catch drips coming out of the engine just check these four bolts two at the front two at the back just make sure that they are the same length yeah, so we don't have to worry about getting them in the right order. Right, so we need to try and 
release this now without causing any damage. Now I noticed there's a couple of little lugs on here which may be able to be used to prise it off a little. Dry a little bit of pressure. No, I'm not too worried about the gasket because well, I've got a new one here and it's split in a few places already. Right, so I'll just hit. Let me drip through there. And you can see quite a bit of sludge in the bottom. Seems like any dampness and that's been clicked in there. and. Due to the um, oil being lighter than the water, the water will drop to the bottom, the oil will float on top, so any dampness will end up on the bottom there. We've got the oil filter, the, uh, there's a strainer here before it goes into the filter, through, up through these pipes, and we've got this here, which I think is an oil pressure relief valve, right down here. That's all to clean. So now I'll drain this off first and give it a bit of a wipe down and clear the gasket off as well, try and get this removed. It's probably been put on dry the gasket, which is why it's stuck and it's just ripping into, into pieces. I don't know if you can see that there, all the sludge around the bottom there. Show sure, you. Yeah. But it's white and see it's got water in it's just the dampness which has been collecting in the bottom well, it's not not too much of a problem but you you never know the filters right on the bottom the intake for the filter could get sucked up there around the engine I think with some uh, engines if they don't get used enough and they don't get hot enough up to temperature the water seems to collect. I've heard of this years ago with uh, I think some of the Ford Escorts, the CVH engine where if the thermostat wasn't working properly didn't get hot enough and it got a lot of white sludge in the oil because it wasn't getting hot enough for it to evaporate and just come out with the breather pipe ended up collecting in the oil so maybe it's just not getting used enough. Another little tip which me uh, dad told us when you're cleaning up gaskets so you get most of the gasket off and then use the corner of a steel rule or the edge but you've got to watch you don't scrape into the aluminium but just rub it along that's the scraper and it cleans off any of the remaining gasket get it off without damaging the surface. Same with dad was an engineer. Time served apprentice. We went, to sea as, went to sea as an engineer. Let's see there's still some remains of a previous gasket. See the black writing on it. this surface as clean as possible and as flat as possible no want any gouges in because we're trying to use any gasket paste with it this also it highlights any high spots, I'm not sure there's a little one there and it will scrape off the top of the high spot right that's it and it's not just around the edges but if you can see that there this is a mating surface where the gasket's got to go for these oil wheels and I've got a little bit of gasket in there but it doesn't matter because we're cleaning those out in a minute same on that one 
right. right, so I'll give this a bit more of a clean out first and then we'll look at the rest. Right, next thing is to get the oil filter out in the strainer. Now the filter, I do have some of the cups that fit over the top oil filters to take them out, but I haven't got one this size, so we're going back to the old fashioned method, the chain whip. So let's see. Now you use these for taking them off, and the same with the, the cup which fits over the top, but you shouldn't use those or uh, tighten them up. If you may over tighten it, you might end up stripping the threads on the filter because they're only pressed steel. I'll just let that drain them a second. The filter down the bottom. See so if we can get you in a position where you can see it. You can see the light's not too good here, but we've got a, what looks like a 10 millimeter bolt there. And uh, I don't know if this is just plastic, and it's got a tab washer on. So I've got a screwdriver, see if we can bend the, top, the tab washer down. Right, so we've got the screwdriver and a little knocking stick. Seems like a, I think it's a steel but very thin little tap washer and uh, stop it rotating because you don't want it too tight with this just being plastic. And there's the little strainer which seems very clean, doesn't seem like there's any debris in it, very little at least. And there. rubber gasket off the oil filter. Right, I'll try and clean this out, get rid of all the oil and sludge out of it. Well for anybody who wants to know what the crank shaft assembly looks like on one of these. It's up there, you can see the crank, you can make out the pistons. Big ends. So that's one good thing about these bikes is that you could strip the whole engine down without actually taking it out of the bike. You can get the heads off, the barrels and pistons, you can get the the conrods out. You can't do that with a lot of bikes. You need to get the engine out and that's normally a big task in itself. Right, so we've got that all cleaned. What need to do now is try to have a look at this pressure relief valve. Now, as it happens, it's also 22 millimetre. Right, so I'll just clean that out and we'll, uh, I'll go and blow out all the oil wheels, make sure there's no debris in them. So we'll start putting everything back together. So we'll see if I can put this back in the reverse order. So we've got that little cover on. 
the plunger with the spring. Moving freely. And then the nut twirls it all together. See, I've cleared out all the oil wheels so it's nice and free. So I just need to nip that up. Nice and tight. Now we've got this strainer on. So it's just a nylon strainer. Cleaned it all out. A little washer. And there's two little grooves in here. Got to make sure that the either side of this tab washer. Need a little nip on that, not too much. <coughs> Squash the plastic. Get the tab washer. And nip it up against the flats on the uh, the nut. Stop it unwinding. That's it. Now the filter. I've put a little bit of oil around the filter. Now that's so that when you tighten it up, you don't get the friction of the rubber that stops you tightening it up. You should only tighten them up by hand. Now the other thing, when you first start it up, there's no oil going to your bearings. So until it sucks it all through the filter and that. So it's best if you can fill up the filter. Now I've seen somebody doing one and they filled this up and turned it upside down to screw it on. And I take that a lot of the oil will have run out by the time it did that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that up. Because this is dry, I'm going to put it on from underneath. Screw it on. I know the oil will start running out there. But then I can fill up the oil ways from this side. Hopefully to try and stop it. So, let's see, we've got some oil in here. Fill up the filter. Now there's two sides to the filter, so I'm going to fill that up. And what will probably happen, it's done already, it's dropped right down to about here. It's soaking through the filter into the other half because you've got it inside and outside of the filter paper. So just It will help it so that when we first start it up, it won't take so long for the oil to get pumped round. What I normally do as well, which you'll see when I go to start it, is disconnect the HT leads or the ignition so that it'll turn over or it won't fire. And I turn it over until the oil pressure light goes out. And then you know that your oil's right the way around before you try to start it up. Saves a little bit of extra damage to the, the bearings. Right, so that's full right up now. Right, I'm just going to get a funnel, little funnel. Right, so now turn this over, try and put the oil filter on from underneath. And you tighten the filter up as I said earlier. You should really just tighten it up by hand. So that seems tight enough. 
Right, so I'm going to flip it over and then try and fill up the other oil wheels before too much oil sort of siphons out of the filter. It doesn't matter if I drop a bit of oil out of here because it's only going to end up in the sump which will be getting filled up anyhow. You've got to remember there's four of these holes are bolt holes so you, you don't want to be pouring oil down them. just pouring out because it's coming out of the filter and the strainer at the bottom. Right, so everything seems alright there. Next thing is to put the gasket on. Now, what I've done, rather than leave the gasket dry, I've seen some people use oil and different things on these. What I was shown to do when I was a teenager was to put petroleum jelly on them. It's a bit of Vaseline. So you only need a very thin smearing of it. And it it's supposed to stop the gasket from sticking. So that if you ever need to separate these two Need to, so if you ever need to separate the, uh, the sump, then hopefully the gasket won't get torn apart. Right, so that's it done, all ready to go back on. So I'm just going to put that on and put all the bolts in. Okay. Right, so we've just had a bit of a downpour, I've had to cover everything up, but anyway, oil's in, it's all screwed up and I did tighten up the four bolts in the bottom, which it weren't on video, it was off, off film. Um, I've taken the plugs out and I've gapped them while I was on, that was one of the things, give them a clean and gap them. And I've left them out so that the engine will spin over a bit more freely. Let's see. So, there's none. Now I've put the spark plugs on the cylinder head so the spark because it does say that if you don't it can damage your ECU. But I'm just looking at the oil light and the second one from the left, the red one, first red one, it should go off after it's cranked over a little while. And there it's gone out. So we are getting enough oil pressure there. So I'll pop the plugs back in, then we'll give it a start. So plugs are back in, and we'll put a bit of choke on. Lovely 
Tappets on this side could be sound a bit loud and that's one of the jobs I'm going to do is set the tappets so we'll have a look at that later but I think next it's going to be gearbox and uh, the diff oil change those so hopefully I'll see you again next time but in the meantime take care everyone <laughs>